What's going on guys here at 11 a great day today and today it is Wednesday so that means we're talking about some more Made in Abyss. This is Season 2 Episode 6 titled The Luring. But before I get into my thoughts make sure to head on down to the comment section below and hear what you thought of this episode. Is it your favourite yet? Is it your least favourite? What was your favourite moment and while you're there make sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're a fan of anime and Japanese gaming. If you like Made in Abyss I'm covering Season 2 weekly on the channel. I'm going to have other Made in Abyss videos coming in the future. But now let's talk about the episode. Episode 5 left Rico with an ultimatum of what to sacrifice in order to free Nanachi. Rico thinks there are options, and as she is about to agree with Bailaf on one, Nanachi wakes up, telling her not to, and both Kaja and Ma drag her away. Outside of Bailaf's cave, a creature attacks the village, and we learn of something called the Luring, where residents of the village are luring a creature from outside to kill it and add value to the village. This particular creature has appeared before, now having grown exponentially, and the villagers struggle to take it down. One of the three sages, Jeroy Mo, who seemingly has replaced Boiko on the group, emerges from his cave to face this creature, but is still left defeated. In a last resort, Rico comes up with a plan involving fire to create wind that will blow away the force field surrounding the creature, allowing the villagers to attack head on. Now the plan works, but the creature still almost manages to pull in many of the villagers, until Prushka appears to Rico and speaks to her, telling her to blow the white whistle. From above, Reg arrives, now sporting a white helmet and arm, and defeats the creature once and for all. Wazakayan shows up after the defeat of the creature, congratulating everyone on their success. When asked how Rico can free Nanachi, he tells her that the only thing of equal value to a human is something from Fafata, so Reg once again goes on his way to speak with her. The episode ends with Waco revealing who she is to some of the Hollows, which will lead into us finally learning more about what happened in the past. Once again guys, this is another banger episode of Made in Abyss Season 2. It's far from my favourite of the series I think so far, simply because it's really just focused on one thing, and that is this whole luring situation. But we do get some excellent moments that are really going to drive forward the story and just raise even more questions. The first thing that comes to mind is of course this whole white reg situation where he comes in, his helmet's white, basically anything of him that was normally like that bluish black colour has now turned to white. And I thought that was permanent, but he just seems to be when Rico blows the white whistle. So that's almost a call to him and... She almost has a little bit of a control over him. But I guess now we know that Reg almost has these two sides to him, or three sides if you will, where he's just normal Reg as we've seen throughout most of the show. We've seen Dark Reg in Dawn of the Deep Soul, and now we're seeing White Reg, the Light Reg if you will. I think I have a good grasp on like the White Reg situation though. It seems like when Rico blows the White Whistle, or quite frankly anyone I guess, but of course Rico is the only one who can blow it, that is almost an awakening of this White Reg. We still don't really know how the whole Dark Reg thing works because we basically took in all this energy in Dawn of the Deep Soul, but we don't know exactly what activates it. Out of everyone in the whole show, I think Reg is the person who has the most questions around him because we still really don't know a whole lot about him. Like, we're aware he's a robot, we're aware there's links with Liza, we're getting some more ideas about how he might have been created, the potential of where his creator might be, but we really have nothing, like, solidified. We have nothing concrete to really give us a grasp of exactly what Reg is. Now there's something about this episode that has me potentially worried about this arc, and it's Nanachi. They've basically taken her out, if you will, like she's just, she's she's there, she, she's not really going to be doing much in this arc by the sounds of it, because they've essentially like put her to the side to then use her at a later point. And Nanachi is my favourite character in Maiden Abyss, I think she is the best character not only just because of her backstory, though that is a major part of it, but I just think her, like, ideals, her motives, her goals, everything about her, to me, just, she seems like the most human out of all the characters. So as a big fan of that character, it seems like a shame to take her out of this whole arc. I understand if, if there's nothing to really do with her in this arc, then that's fine. Like, you know, it's better to not have her around than try and force an arc on her or force some development that maybe doesn't work. But it still doesn't change the fact that Nanich is my favourite character, and I just want to see more of her. Back to the good parts of this episode though, I thought the whole action sequence was actually really quite enjoyable to watch. It's the first time really in this season where we've got a full on like big exciting type action sequence, because we've really not had a whole lot of it so far, which is perfectly fine. It absolutely does not hold a candle, like it's, it's not even close to anything we saw in Dawn the Deep Soul between Reg and Bondru, and uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to be very easy to top those fights. But what I'm noticing about this season is like the really interesting designs, because it's so focused on hollows which in and of themselves all have really unique and diverse designs it's just cool to see like all these people like fighting against one thing and you're just seeing 
lots of different looking characters, lots of different creature designs on screen. And, you know, so far in Maiden Abyss, we've not really seen that. Like, sure, we've seen, like, the occasional creatures here and there, but to see all these incredibly diverse designs in the same frame is really cool. And we're now starting to see some of the brutality that I think this season is going to have to offer. With this creature that comes in, the whole force field, like, purple jelly thing it's got around it, it seems to just melt people down, so it's grabbing all these hollows and, like, melting the faces off, melting all the skin off. And there's some really horrific stuff. And because this is made in Abyss, we know for a fact that it is going to get a lot worse than what we've seen. Personally, I've never understood the hype around Prushka as a character, because she appears in Dawn of the Deep Soul, and she plays a big role, of course, in that film, but she's not in all of it. She didn't seem like a big character as such, so going into Season 2, when they kind of labelled her as a main character still, I was like what? Like, I knew she became the White Whistle and all that kind of thing, uh, but they really stand to showcase that here. She's almost like this beacon of hope for Rico, someone that's with her at all steps of a journey. I think that's really quite beautiful. I, I love the scene where she appears, talks to Rico, we get Prushka's theme playing in the background, which is so beautiful. And I think it's safe to say it's one of the best scenes that we've got in the season so far, and it's just something that has a lot of heart to it. Now, last week I said that I was hoping either this week or next week we'd really start to dive into the past a lot more. Now, of course, we didn't get it this week, but I think the ending of this episode has set up for next week to really dive into that. Waco's now starting to reveal the past a little bit more, and presumably it's going to be story time, so that's when we're going to get the whole backstory revealed, and I for one cannot wait to see it. But those are my thoughts on Maiden Abyss Season 2, Episode 6, titled The Luring. Before I get out of here, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a like on this video. Also subscribe if you're a fan of anime and Japanese gaming. If you like Maiden Abyss and you're a big fan of it like me, I'm going to be covering Season 2 weekly, still continuing to do so, and we're going to have plenty more Maiden Abyss videos to come in the future. Most importantly though, I want to hear your thoughts on this episode, so head on down to the comment section below, let me know your favourite moment, let me know what you thought of the episode overall, and are you excited for next week, and do you think we're finally going to get that backstory? As always, thank you so much for tuning into MChat today, and I'll see you all in the next video.